Crossover family, welcome to the Gotta Be The Shoes series week two. We had some technical difficulties this Sunday with our streaming, so I decided to come in here to the podcast studio and record this for you guys so you could still catch the message if you weren't here on Sunday. And so it's just gonna be me talking directly to you guys. There's no crowd, there's no camera angle switching, but uh, we're gonna rock it today. So, so let me ask you this. How many of you guys uh, count your steps on a daily basis? How many of y'all got, like, got one of those smart watches and uh, anybody out there try to do 10,000 steps a day? Um, type in, in the comments if you try to do 20,000. Uh, type in the comments if you do 30,000. Um, that's a lot of steps. Well, I wanna give a shout out to our Flavor Fest um, setup and breakdown coordinator. See there on my screen, that's a screenshot of his steps, 40,182 steps. Shout out to Angel, uh, Angel killed it, man. I mean, his feet must have been hurting at the end of the day, right? How many of y'all ever had a day like that where it was like crazy long and you were on your feet and by the end of the day, your dogs were barking, right? Your feet were not happy. Well, that's what I wanna talk about today. Week two of the Gotta Be The Shoes series, is talking about happy feet. Did you know that you're gonna walk around the earth five times in the course of your lifetime? In essence, you're gonna walk around 115,000 miles in your lifetime. That is a lot of steps. And so, man, our feet are super important, but honestly, a lot of times we don't pay a lot of attention to our feet. You know, a lot of times we consider our feet ugly, we just try to cover them up and we just, Think about the shoes that we put on them, right? But our feet are so, so important. As a matter of fact, health professionals say that our feet are mirrors of our health. So a lot of times if you have like a health problem or whatever that's, that's starting to develop or condition or disease, many times it shows up first in your feet. So if you think about it like diabetes, arthritis, um, circulatory issues, neuro neurological issues, usually many times they show up first in people's feet. So the foot is super complex. It has 26 bones, like 33 ligaments, all kinds of muscles. They're all vital to help us to be able to balance, to be able to walk. And, and one foot problem could literally stop you dead in your tracks. So if you have an ingrown toenail, if you have bunions, if you got heel spurs, if you've got corns, like, like that can literally put you in a wheelchair. Did you know that if you broke your little toe, you would have to learn how to walk all over again? And so, but you know what the number one cause of foot problems is? Having shoes that don't properly fit. That's right. So Sunday when I did this message, I was wearing a pair of Nike Air Maxes. Um, I have some KDs on right now, but, but Nike Air Max, if you got some Nike Air Maxes, type in the comments, Air Max, because um, Air Maxes are comfortable. They have, they have the air cushion, you know what happy feet are. Um, so we, we love to have shoes that look good and feel good at the same time. But I'm curious, how many of you guys have a pair of shoes that look good, but they don't feel so good, right? Put in the comments, I do. I know I do, I, I, I have several pairs like that, right? Um, but you know, you still wear them, don't you? You still wear them because they look good or you paid a lot of money for them or they were a gift or because they match some of your outfits, right? And so ladies often do this with heels, guys can do this with dress shoes, with the hard bottoms, with no cushioning. But even some sneakers, um, they're not always that comfortable. And so last week in week one of Gotta Be The Shoes, we shared the gospel shoe for sneakerheads is the Air Jordan 1. Um, it's this iconic, best-selling shoe. I love Jordan 1s, and, and this is a pair of Jordan 1s, and these are actually the customs that we made that actually has my, my book cover uh, on the side panels. It's got the gotta be the shoes on the back. So, so Jordan 1s, most will argue these are not made for long-term comfort. They're, they're, they're not. Uh, compared to most modern sneakers, the insole in here is, is not that great. So at first when I was writing my book, I actually wrote in there that the Jordan 1s don't have any air cushioning in them, like any Nike Air in them. 
But then I fact checked myself because you're supposed to do that when you're writing a book. I wanted to make sure it was legit if I'm publishing it right. And I found out they actually do. There's a very small encapsulated air unit that's right here in the heel. Um, but, but it's only small, very little. It's just right here in the heel. So if you cut these in half and you can go online and Google it, some people have. It's just a little bit of air. But then the rest of it is just flat and the cushioning is, is, is very thin. And so I just got to say this, Nike, I got some beef with y'all. These shoes came out almost 40 years ago and you guys have never updated the actual cushioning for it. And with all the hype of it's got to be the shoes and these shoes will make you play better. I argue that these are not the greatest basketball shoes compared to a lot of the modern shoes. Maybe they were good at the time, but, but now not so much. And so listen, I personally know because I was wearing a pair of Jordan 1s when I popped my Achilles right here in the church gym back in 2016. Um, see, you know what I was doing, y'all? I, I, was, I was dunking on people. Left and right, I, I was just killing it. The story gets better every time I tell it. Actually, no, um, I just did one little quick pivot move and pop, uh, my Achilles pop. Now, I'm not blaming it all on the shoes. Um, my doctor told me that the surgeon, because I had to get surgery to get it repaired, that it was a combination of my age. Yes, I'm getting older. I have to admit it was humbling. And it was a combination of the flat bottom shoes that I was wearing. So I swore, like, I'm never going to wear Jordan 1s again. And now I have more pairs than ever. And I even have a custom custom pairs that people can get. Uh, but I don't play basketball on them. No, I pretty much retired until, until I get to heaven. So, But, but here's the point, y'all. This shines a light on a major cultural problem that we have. We would rather look good than feel good. You guys feel me? Right? And that goes way beyond our, our shoes and our clothes because we can act like the outside's amazing, but the inside could be literally falling apart. And so we're asked, hey, how you doing? And predictably, we'll be like, oh, yeah, fine, great, everything's good. Right? Or if you're super spiritual, you'll throw in some church cliches and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Right? But really, we're lying many times. We become good actors. And the outside can look amazing, but the inside, literally, we could be falling apart. And the insole of our heart could be flat and worn out and crushed. And so we act like we're happy because we want to be happy, right? But y'all know the old saying, right? Fake it until you what? Type it in the chat. Fake it until you make it. But we all know that that doesn't work, does it? That, that's not the answer. We all want happy feet, but how do we really get a pair of those? Well, Jesus, Jesus talked about happy people that had happy feet in Matthew chapter five, his most famous, famous sermon, um, Matthew chapter five. It's also called the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to go ahead and read that passage together today in Matthew five. We're going to start in verse three. But back in 2017, I had the privilege and honor to get an all, exp all, all expense paid trip to go to the Holy Land. And we did several stops of, of where Jesus and the disciples were. And it was beautiful. It was amazing. It was life changing. But one of the most powerful memories I had is when we went to the very mountainside where Jesus preached this sermon. And I want to show you guys a picture from my computer. I don't have the big LED wall behind me for this. This is low tech. It's just me here in the studio. Uh, but that was a picture. That's actually me right there. My hair was all like kind of blowing in the wind. And we were on this mountainside and, and you see the water back there? That's the Sea of Galilee. And there were some, you know, some mountains around it. And this guy right there, he was a theologian, an apologist, and he knew the entire sermon uh, on the mount by heart. So he knew Matthew chapter five, six, and seven by heart. So he didn't stand there and read it out of a Bible. He didn't read it off of a tablet or off of his phone. He just stood there and preached the whole thing. And let me tell you guys something. It was powerful. I'll never forget it. It felt like we were in that moment, like picturing like Jesus there preaching this on the mountainside. It was, it, it was amazing. And so in that passage, the word blessed is used quite a bit in the first couple of verses. Like blessed are the, blessed are the, blessed are the, right? But you know what another word for blessed is? Happy. That's right. And so um, some translations actually use the word happy. And so that's what we're going to use today. The common English 
Bible translation because it really makes it come to life. So here's what it says. Jesus said this, starting in verse three. Happy are people who are hopeless because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are people who grieve because they will be made glad. Happy are the humble because they will inherit the earth. Happy are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be fed until they are nice and full. Happy are people to show mercy because they themselves will receive mercy. Happy are those that have pure hearts because they will see God. Happy are those that make peace because they will be called God's children. They'll be peacemakers, right? Happy are people whose lives are harassed because they're righteous, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you because of me. Who's me? Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the one that's saying these words, right? He's saying if people make fun of you and harass you because of me, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be happy. Jesus says this. He says, be full of joy and be glad. Why? Because you have a great reward in heaven. And in the same way that people harass the prophets who came before you. So let me pray for us real quick before we dive into the meat of today. Let's pray. Father, I come before you today. I lift up my brothers and sisters, my crossover family online that is watching this message today. And even though there was some technical difficulties and we don't have all the bells and whistles, the LED wall behind me, the multiple camera angles, the crowd shots. Um, God, maybe you wanted it just like this today for me to be able to record this the day after the sermon and, and add some extra sauce to it. So God, speak to your people today, God. We apologize the times that we're, uh, we're chasing happiness in the wrong things. God, help us today to do it your way. In Jesus' name, everybody type in the comments, amen. Amen. Give somebody uh, around you, if you're watching it with somebody, give somebody a fist bump and tell them, don't worry, be happy. And uh, again, today's week two of uh, the series that we're doing, Gotta Be the Shoes. And it is based off of my new book. And if y'all haven't heard yet, like it comes in a shoe box. Um, you can get it in a custom shoe box. And it is my first book that I ever did that's available um, in a hardback cover. Um, there's also a, a black and white. I mean, there's also a paperback version available of it as well. And we did a photo shoot inside, full color inside with sneakers. There's also the, 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 the um, paperback version is black and white inside. But actually, uh, if you haven't gotten one of these yet, you can go to freeshoesbook.com and you can get the paperback one for free. I'm just giving it away. I want to bless people with it. If you want to get the hardback full color one, um, it's just a little bit, it's a couple dollars. If you want to get the box, you can add that as well. The box is super cool. It's a collector's item, makes for a great gift for Christmas for a sneaker head that you might know. Um, but it, it, if you're coming across over this Sunday, you can also get it in person. But freeshoesbook.com, you could grab it. There's a master class with it. Um, you can tap in and follow along with us the rest of the series. So last week, the first week of the series, if you didn't watch it, you can go back and watch it. We talked about gospel shoes. And in Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul talked about putting on the armor of God. And he talks about all these different pieces of it. And then he gets to the footwear. And he talks about the gospel shoes of peace. Right? We all need some peace. But, but how do we get that? We learned last week as well. It comes with surrender. We have to surrender to God. And when we surrender, that's when we can have those happy feet. And we can be happy people like Jesus talked about in chapter 5 of Matthew uh, if you're taking notes today in the crossover app, you can take some notes, even if you're watching online. If you didn't download the app, we have an app. You can type notes in. You can email them to yourself. There's a lot of things you can do on the crossover app. First note is this. Uh, the world's path to happiness is opposite of God's path to happiness. Now, I'm sorry. This is a low production. We don't have the lower third right there. So I'm going to say it one more time. The world's path to happiness is opposite. Somebody type in the comments, opposite. It's opposite of God's path to happiness. And so we're going to go back through Matthew chapter five right now, and we're going to clearly be able to see that. Watch this, because here's the thing. All of us want to be happy, right? We're, we're striving to try to be happy, uh, but many times we chase money. We chase material things. We, we Maybe we chase sneakers, purses, watches, jewelry, 
positions, people, whatever it might be. We try to chase those things instead of chasing God and his purpose. And it always disappoints. It doesn't make us happy. And so in verse three, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. That's what most translations say. The one we looked at says, um, happy are people who are hopeless. Okay, hold on a minute, y'all. So that doesn't sound happy. I don't want to be hopeless. I like having hope. Um, actually, I'm wearing a shirt. It says hip hop hope. See, I didn't even plan that. Look at God. Look at God. Um, I want to have hope. And, and it said poor in spirit. I don't want to be poor. I, I was poor growing up. I don't want to go back to the struggle, right? So, so wait a minute. What is, what is this saying, right? That doesn't sound like happy, but uh, it's all about context. So write this down. Here's the next note. Um, to be poor in spirit, or what this is talking about, hopeless, is to be conscious of your continual dependence on God. That's what it means, y'all. Followers of Jesus, we got to recognize that, hey, without Jesus, I'm inadequate. I am hopeless without Jesus. Like, I need him so much. It reminds me of John uh, chapter 15, verse 5, where it talks about God is like the vine and we're the branches. And if we get disconnected from the vine, then we can't produce any fruit. We can't really do anything of significant value. So really what verse 3 is saying, y'all, it's a posture of our spirit. It doesn't mean we can't have hope. It doesn't mean we can't have wealth, right? But it's the posture of our spirit saying, man, without God, I can't have any of them any of these things. Without God, I, I am hopeless. It's about context. Context is so key. So when you don't understand something in scripture, research it, study it, break down the context, y'all. Verse four, we're going to keep going. We're going to break this, this passage down. It says, blessed are those that mourn or happier are those that grieve for they will be comforted. That's the good news. And they'll be made glad. So this verse really refers to being saddened by the things that make God sad. So here's your next note. Um, God grieves over sin and injustice, and so should we. So should we, y'all. There's tons of that around us, I know. But instead of getting numb and just ignoring it, like asking God, hey, give me a heart to feel that. Give me a heart to see it. Give me, give me ears to hear it, right? And, and then comfort me and make me glad that I have hope in you. Um, but also... Show me some ways that I can maybe help make things right and I can bring some solutions and I can use my experience, my talents, and maybe some of my resources to be a blessing and represent you and bring light. So verse five, it says, happier those who are humble or happier those who are meek. Now, let me say this, y'all. Meekness is not weakness. Humility is not weakness. Humility is not unsuccessful. No, it's, it's quite the opposite, y'all. Listen, I've been around some of the most successful people in the world, some of the greatest leaders, and some of them are incredibly humble and real people. Um, I've also been around some people who are, yeah, re realistic leaders, some leaders, uh, and, and they are not humble, and they're prideful, and they're arrogant, and they name drop, and they want to tell you about their, all their accomplishments and remind you of all these things and this and that and the other. You already know a lot of it, Right. And it's like, man, it's, it's such a difference. And a lot of those people aren't truly happy. But the leaders that are humble, man, they're, they're, they're happy. Uh, prideful people that have pride, they're caught up in their feelings all the time, right? And so write this down in your notes. Or type this in your crossover app. Humble people are more happy than prideful people. That's a real thing, y'all. So as we continue unpacking this passage, verse 6, um, Jesus tells us happy people are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Now, listen, y'all, I'll say this. Most Christians are malnourished. It's not because they're not eating. It's because they're eating the wrong things. They're not eating the right things. Like you can't have a cake and ice cream spiritual diet. Cake and ice cream tastes good. I, I love cake and ice cream, but that has no nutritional value. And if that's what you eat all the time, you're just going to get fat and you're going to get lazy. You're going to get spiritually fat, right? And so uh, some of you are trying to you're trying to fill your spiritual hunger with Netflix. You're trying to fill your spiritual hunger with material things. You're trying to fill your spiritual hunger with, with social media. And you might even say, well, Pastor T, some of the stuff I'm watching is spiritual or it's positive, but it's not replacing the word of God and reading God's word. It's not replacing being in God's presence and spending time with them. 
And so many times we're just looking for a quick fix and we don't want to do the hard work. So uh, write this down. You'll experience true happiness when you hunger and thirst for God's righteousness and you apply a standard of God to your life. So you're putting that standard. You're raising the bar. You're doing the things that God has called you to do. Listen, if you train your, your spiritual appetite to eat the right spiritual things, then you'll be filled and you'll be satisfied. Listen, in the same way, it's like this, y'all. Over the years, I've had to train my physical appetite to change. So when I was younger, you know, when you're younger, you just kind of don't care. You eat whatever, right? And you can get away with it. But as you get older, uh, you start to feel it. You can see the effects and things aren't the same anymore. And you start to like take health a little bit more seriously, hopefully, right? And so I began to change the way I ate. I mean, this was many years back. I mean, really, when I was in my 20s, I started to really begin to change the way I was eating. And I slowed down on the fast food uh, and I started eating more greens. I was already taking my vitamins, but I, I, I stopped drinking soda altogether. And I just drink water and I like soda. Soda tastes good. And I'll drink it maybe like a couple times a year. Um, but just like the other day, I was offered soda like three times. I'm like, nope, I'll take a bottle of water. I'm good. Right. Because I've trained my my appetite. And sometimes like I don't eat fast food, maybe once in a blue moon, once a year. And when I do, it tastes good. But man, later my stomach is like, uh, uh, nah, we're, we're, we're not doing this. Right. Because my appetite has changed for the healthier things. And, and that's one of the reasons why I, I'm in good shape and I have energy and I don't look my age. It's because I'm eating the right things. Spiritually, we need to eat the right things. And when we have that right spiritual diet, guess what? We become full and content. On the other hand, if you're just eating that buffet of materialism, if you're eating the buffet of entertainment and social media all the time, and you're chasing after all that stuff and retail therapy, you're always going to be left unhappy and longing for more because it's junk food. Like I said last week, the fuller my closet got, the emptier my heart got. Here's what verse seven says. Verse seven says, happier people who show mercy and the world tells us the opposite of that. Think about it. Like every TV show, every movie, when somebody's done wrong, they're scheming on how to get revenge, on how to get them back, on how to hit them five times harder, right? And it many times has us as followers of Jesus rooting for the bad guy, rooting for the sinner because the way they read the story and it pulls on our emotions and our heartstrings and, and sucks us right back in. And we're like, man, but listen, we did a message last month about taking the high road and it's not always easy, but man, it's so much better when we just give it to God and we let him handle it. Because uh, how many of y'all ever tried to get revenge before and it just, it didn't work. It didn't feel like you thought it was gonna feel, right? It didn't do what you were hoping it would do. And it can cause you to then have to watch your back and be paranoid and be worried. And it can bring some feelings of regret and maybe shame. And, and write this down in your notes. But when you have mercy and you give it to God, it brings freedom. Come on, somebody type freedom in the chat. Freedom. And it puts you in a position to receive mercy in the future. I've been a merciful person. And there's been moments where I need mercy. And then, man, God allows that to happen in my life. Verse 8 says, uh, happy are the people who have pure hearts. So write this down, family, or type this in. When we're authentic, keyword, authentic. When we're authentic before God, we come clean about the good, the bad, the ugly. And we ask him for help. We see him move powerfully in our lives. Powerfully. So be authentic. Type that in the comments. Be authentic. Verse 9 it tells us happy the people that make peace. They rock the gospel shoes of peace, right? Being a peacemaker is like being a mediator to kind of help people resolve conflicts against like two different parties and help them to reconcile when they have issues. So what do you have to do? You make peace by identifying the truth, by, by addressing the sin. If there's some sin there, there isn't always, but sometimes there is a lot of times, right? And then constructing a bridge between those two parties that are at, that are at odds with each other. So write this down in your notes. Peacemaking can be hard work, but it's when we become like Jesus. That's when we become like Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was the mediator for us when we messed up, when we had all kinds of sin issues, right? Jesus became the mediator. So when we become the mediator and we bridge the gap and help other people 
man, we're becoming like Jesus. So here's the last part, y'all. Verses, verses 10 and 11. Um, it's about being happy when people harass you for following Jesus. How many of you guys ever have been dissed because you follow Jesus? Like, just type in the chat, I have. My hands up, I have. Right? It's not fun. People, you know, might make fun of you or ignore you or, or avoid you, not invite you to things, right? So that doesn't sound fun, right? So, so how can you be full of joy and glad about this, right? Well, remember, our reward in heaven is going to be great, y'all. It's going to be great. So Romans 8, 18, it reminds us this. It says, the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that's going to be revealed to us. So listen. It's all going to be worth it if we follow God's blueprint for our life. Heaven is going to be amazing. The best is yet to come, y'all. And you might slightly suffer some persecution when people laugh at you at your job or they don't sit with you at the lunch table. They don't invite you to the party that you really don't want to go to anyways, right? Um, But man, if you think about it in the Bible, so many other believers were persecuted so much worse than the stuff that, that we have to face sometimes. I mean, they had it so much worse. People were killed. Even today in many countries, Christians are killed. Um, You can watch this and stream this online right now, and you're not worried that someone's going to show up at your door and arrest you and take you to jail or shoot you because you are watching uh, a Christian sermon and we're going through a Bible passage and we're breaking it down. Um, We're blessed that we have freedom to worship God, right? And so but here at the end of the day, sometimes Christians, we want to blend in too much. And, and listen, there's some ways we, we can blend in and relate to people and build bridges, but there's other things about our character and our lifestyle. We're going to stand out, y'all, and that's okay. We are called to be different. I'm going to wrap it up with this, y'all. How many guys have seen that movie, Happy Feet? Anybody seen Happy Feet? Put in the chat, I got happy feet, right? Um, if you have kids or grandkids, you know about happy feet. So when my daughters were little, they're older teenagers now, but when they were little, this movie just came out. And you know, when kids are little, they want to watch the same movie again and again and again and again and again and again and again again, to the point where they're like, no, I don't want to watch that movie again, right? But they're like, oh, please, Poppy, please, I want to watch the Happy Feet again, right? And so it gets to the point where, you know, you know all the words, you know all the songs, you know what's coming next, right? This was that movie in my house for several months back in the day, right? So I remember this movie. So uh, the movie, there's a, the star of the movie is a penguin named Mumble. And he's born into a colony of emperor penguins. And the way that their colony worked um, to find your mate was you would sing them a love song. And that's how you would attract. But Mumble's problem was he couldn't sing. And as much as he tried to belt out the song, it, ah, it just came out like terrible sounding and everybody laughed at him. But Mumble had this amazing talent. You know what that was, y'all? Type it in the chat. Mumble could dance. That brother could dance. He could cut a rug, right? And so like some people thought it was cool, but still most of the penguins rejected him, made fun of him because he couldn't sing and they really didn't care if he could dance. And so time went on and he gets rejected and even exiled from the rest of the penguins and the rest of his colony and his, and, his, and, and his family even, right? But you know what? He finds his happy feet. He finds his mission. Later in the movie, he comes back uh, to the colony of, pe- of penguins and he teaches them how to do this dance number, right? And then this team of human researchers show up on the mountaintop in a helicopter and they're looking over the valley with thousands of, of penguins out there, right? And Mumble's in the front. And what does Mumble do? Mumble like he puts his foot down. And then like all the other penguins start to do it through the whole valley. Like the penguins are clapping and they're stomping. And the humans are looking at him and the humans are like, yo, this is amazing. They're pulling their phones out and they're trying to do the dance with them and stuff. And, and, and so what was happening is all these fishermen were coming in and taking up all the fish and the penguins were starting to starve. But because they saw these amazing penguins dancing and they're like, and and the the video went viral around the world. All these people were like, we got to save the penguins and there's no fishing around that area. And literally this dismissed dancer, he saves the whole colony of penguins and he becomes the hero. Now look, all of us, we got some unique things that make us stand out. 
Uh, maybe you can dance. Maybe you can sing. Maybe you can do some special things, right? But beyond all that, greater than all of our talents, our creator is calling us to go against the grain. He is, y'all. Go against the grain of the world. First Peter 2, 9 reminds us we're a royal priesthood. We're a chosen people. We're a holy nation. We're God's own possession. And God called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. And listen, y'all, I've answered that call and I have got happy feet. I'm truly happy. I'm not accepted by everybody. I'm not. Some people, they push me away. Some people avoid me. Some people disagree with me. Some people say I'm weird. That's okay. I'm dancing to a different beat like mumble, y'all. And, and listen, they might not hear the rhythm yet, but I'm praying that my life will be light to them. I'm praying that they'll begin to hear the music. They'll begin to nod their head. Then they might begin to stomp their feet and clap their hands a little bit. And they'll begin to dance to the BPMs of heaven, the beats per minute of heaven, the heavenly soundtrack that I'm hearing and many of you are hearing. And I'm praying, man, that my authentic living and dancing and preaching and content creating and book writing and sneaker customizing and all those things that I'm doing to try to be a light, I pray that that will become contagious and I pray that you today are encouraged and inspired to be different and be you. And guess what? That's going to truly give you happy feet. You're going to find your happy feet when you start dancing to God's rhythm like nobody's watching. I know a lot of you guys out there, you dance at home in front of the mirror when nobody's looking. You sing in the shower when nobody's listening. Some of y'all can sing and dance, but you've never done it in front of anybody, but you'll just go off when nobody's around. Uh, man, listen, the only audience that we should be concerned about is him, our creator, an audience of one. So I encourage you, like dance like nobody's watching. Uh, sing like nobody's watching. Represent like nobody's watching. Your heavenly father's watching, and that's all that counts. So family, I know today this was a little bit different. Because this is just me in the podcast studio, me and you. It's an experiment that we did because we had technical difficulties, but God wanted it this way. And I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for your happy feet. And if you're here on this live stream, on this replay, and you're struggling and your feet are not happy, I want you to type in the comments, pray for me. I want to pray for you today. So many people are struggling uh, with happiness, with contentment with joy. And I want to pray that you'll begin to experience that joy that the Bible talks about, joy unspeakable and full of glory, that peace that the Bible talks about that doesn't even make sense, that peace that passes understanding. And so if you need some prayer right now, just type in the comments, pray for me. I'm going to personally be looking at these comments and, uh, and be lifting you up this week. Let's talk to God. Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I thank you for my crossover online family. I know some of them are right here from the Tampa Bay area. There's some people tapping in from other cities around the country, people from New York City, from Los Angeles, from Pennsylvania, from Philly, from Chicago, from Ohio, from North Carolina, from Texas, from Arizona. God, I know that there's people that are watching from other countries right now. We regularly have people that are, are watching from, from Russia, and we have people watching from the UK and from Australia and, and from Japan and so many different places in Africa. And so, God, I just lift up every single person who is watching this on the replay and those that are struggling with happiness right now. I pray in Jesus' name right now, you are going to begin to wrap your arms around them. I pray that they will be blessed. I would pray that they'll be happy. But how does that happen? That happens when we follow the blueprint of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, uh, when we become peacemakers, when we become pure hearted, when we become humble, when we become uh, poor in spirit, that we rely on you. Um, God, all those things that we talked about today, when we have mercy, God, I pray that those are things that will begin to include and infuse into our everyday lifestyle, God. And you're just gonna just, develop and grow the happiness, God. And we're gonna see that we have a hope in you. We have a future in you. And even if we're struggling right now and there's some hard things and I pray for some people that have weight and burdens on their shoulders, uh, relationally, financially, all kinds of things that they're dealing with, maybe mentally and emotionally, they, they got weight on their shoulders. God, I pray you'll just lift it right now today. Lift it, give them that peace that passes understanding. Give them that joy unspeakable and full of glory. I pray, God, for happy feet. In Jesus' name. 
Everybody type in the comments. Amen. Amen. Well, family, thank you guys for joining me in the podcast studio today. Um, share this with a couple people as well. And um, tap in with us next week. Uh, we're going to be continuing the series. Uh, we have two more weeks left of the series. We're going to talk about uh, reps, counterfeits, fakes. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be some good stuff. So uh, if you didn't get the book, freeshoesbook.com. You could go get it there or you could pick it up when you come here to Crossover. But family, I love y'all. I'm praying for you. We'll see you soon. God bless.